Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Welcome back to another News I Missed, where I go over news I missed, because there's always a trillion things to go over in the cryptocurrency space. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Ernst & Young, a multinational firm named among the big four accounting companies, has announced that it has integrated Polygon to allow its clients to process transactions on the Ethereum network. The firm has connected its in-house blockchain services, including EY Ops Chain and EI, EY Blockchain Analyzer to the Indian-based Ethereum Layer 2 scaling solution. This means that their clients can now move transactions from the firm's blockchain portal onto the public Ethereum mainnet through Polygon, according to the official press release from the firm, this now means Ernst & Young can now offer its corporate clients faster and increased transaction volumes with predictable fees and settlement times. This is going to become abundantly necessary the longer that this continues. Uh, Ethereum said the initial upgrade to completion of Ethereum 2.0 was going to be in 2017. We are not there and we may not get there until at least some time next summer for those of you who were not here a couple of years ago ethereum is kind of not even by default uh it's kind of been adopted as the the enterprise institutional chain this is this is why you've seen so many rich people throwing their support behind it or talking about how amazing it is how much more usage it has than bitcoin and smart contracts and yada 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 so this is just another step in that direction i think I think if Ethereum had actually upgraded, if Ethereum itself, the actual main chain, was already Ethereum 2.0 and we had 100,000 transactions per second, I think there could be an actual argument to it already being the number one coin. But this is going to take a very long time for any actual upgrades to happen. So what we tend to see, and is usually, is, is rarely even Polygon. There are usually other chains as well, other side chains and layer two solutions that are integrated into Ethereum in some sort of way that are actually being used by institutions to be able to speed up transactions. Nobody wants to send a transaction, even like realistically, the, the entire promise of the cryptocurrency space is quicker, faster, secure, immutable transactions but even if you're sending like fifty thousand dollars you don't want a one thousand dollar transaction fee you don't even want a twenty dollar transaction fee especially when other chains have you know one cent so cool i assume polygon and many other chains are going to gain a lot more traction as time goes on it's just a, ma a question of realistically if they're used as a another layer of support for ethereum before ethereum has the upgrades once Ethereum has the upgrades, will these chains then still be used as much? Probably. I, I, I can see some other hiccup along the way. Anyway, that's the Ernst & Young, <laughs> Young, Young news. And let's move on. Next up. Um, the American fintech company called Money Lion. I have never heard of Money Lion in my life. Announced that it would enable its users to trade digital assets via its all-in-one finance services application. While initially clients will be able to operate only with Bitcoin and Ethereum, the firm intends to add more cryptocurrencies in the future. According to a recent press release, the U.S. mobile financial technology company MoneyLion launched a new cryptocurrency service for its customers. The firm allowed them to buy, sell, and I assume trade Bitcoin and Ethereum within its app adding the two leading digital assets to only an initial process as Moneyline plans to include numerous other cryptocurrencies. Never heard of Moneyline. And, I, and I've said this before in many other videos. Uh, everyone is trying to do the same exact thing that everyone else is doing. So this is now another company on top of the other 500 that are adding cryptocurrencies to their platform, trying to basically get a, a slice of the pie. Uh, if you plan on choosing to use any new platform that may sound appealing, always look for reviews. Sometimes people jump headfirst into these things and they're like, oh, it's a terrible platform. Look look for a week before you decide to put your money on any platforms and let someone else custody your own money. Find out who they are just in case you never know. But anyway, so cool. Uh, not surprising. It's always Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, there was a time where it was Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. And even for like a, a, a week and a half, it was like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and maybe sometimes Cardano. But Bitcoin and Ethereum are usually the only two that end up being added, and the other ones kind of uh, fall into place 
depending on who kind of remains in the top 10. Here's the actual uh, press release. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's another thing inside the article as well. Uh, in addition, the company apparently is offering a offering $1 million in crypto prize, prizes to early adopters of the new service. Every client who signs up to a Money Lion crypto account between the 16th of September and the 5th of October will get the chance to win part of the reward. Uh, don't give them anything that isn't necessary as far as your own personal information. Don't start depositing things. It seems as if if you sign up, you are entered. So, you know, just in case you're trying to go for that million dollar prize pool, don't give up your crypto just to try and, you know, win a buck. Anyway, that's the Money Lion news. Still no idea what Money Lion is. If you've heard of Money Lion and you like it, please tell people in the comment section just as a, you know, just in case. Let's move on. And this is getting kind of out of hand news, and I don't see any end to this anytime soon. I, I think these people are actually really desperate to get as much control over the cryptocurrency space as possible. I think it's just slightly embarrassing at this point. And I, and, and, and I don't mean that in a, in a joking way or in a like a, once again, like a power to the people kind of thing. It's really like a, the, the excuses that they're saying over and over aren't actually based in any portion of reality. It says the stakes in an ongoing battle between the US SEC and Coinbase got higher on Tuesday as the agency's chairman, Gary Gensler, suggested the biggest crypto exchange in the United States may be breaking the law. Speaking at a hearing convened by the Senate Banking Committee, Gensler observed that Coinbase did not have a license to operate as a stock exchange, even though they have dozens of tokens that might be securities. Gensler remarks were noted uh, given that it did not come in, that it did not come in response to a direct question about securities, but instead as an aside, while replying to a query from Elizabeth Warren about whether customers could be harmed when exchanges like Coinbase go down under high trading volume. I, I personally, this is just my opinion. After having been in this space for a number of years, uh, this is all nonsense, completely and utterly. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it was even sometime last year, and it was also before in the past as well, whenever there was a huge amount of energy, money, whatever, volume flowing through the cryptocurrency space on any given day, we had a problem where cryptocurrency exchanges were going down. We were told by many different crypto exchanges that this was happening because of the high amount of people. They said their systems were only capable of handling half a million people and 1.6 million people went into their platform. Therefore, that's why it went down. And then this became, okay, over the year, we're going to make sure that we add more robust features and have our cryptocurrency exchanges, you know, so and so and so, but cryptocurrency exchanges kept on going down. And then people kind of figured out that there was maybe like a, um, like a circuit breaker, like an off switch in the event that prices were dropping uh, too quickly. The idea then became that cryptocurrency companies shouldn't have this amount of power, but the issue is they're a company. They're, they're a centralized feature, a centralized place that has an actual office that you can walk into, so of course they're going to have stuff like that. So many people really don't understand what it means to actually be decentralized and have control over your own money. I know we've lived in a world where we always have to trust a bank, we have to trust some other thing like that, but of course this is going to happen. In the event that there is a major downfall in prices, cryptocurrency exchanges would in turn, as they are centralized and they're looking after themselves before you, they would turn off their systems and simply say, oops, sorry, you know, prices couldn't fall any lower. But even more so, this happens all the time. I, I feel like we're constantly on, imagine being in a city, imagine the city that you live in, vaguely in your mind. Now imagine only walking on one street the entire time. I feel like so many people who are into the cryptocurrency space know nothing about finance. They know nothing about how the financial world actually works. They see these things, they end up panicking. It's all good and amazing while they're making money, but the moment anything kind of switches in some sort of way, they completely panic and lose their minds. This happens all the time. For those of you not looking at the screen, it happens for every single stock exchange around the world. They have these like circuit breakers. They have these kind of like cuts if things end up falling too fast and therefore you know, whatever, they end up uh, turning off their systems and they wait until people have had a little bit more to settle down. So the idea that 
any exchange like Coinbase or anything else could be uh, harming consumers or whatever based off of them turning it off. Why isn't the discussion about stock exchanges doing that as well? Why isn't the discussion about people, normal people, uh, retail investors making money with GameStop and AMC and all these other things and people turning off stock exchanges and apps to make sure that they don't make any more money? Why is the conversation always about the cryptocurrency space? Why are these people continuing to say the exact same thing that they've said before in 2015 about the cryptocurrency space, but no one's actually challenging them? It's it's a really weird position to constantly be in. Um, and what was the other point that I had to make? I don't even remember. Ah, the entire idea. Listen, probably I, I, I hope to the heavens this is the last time that I have to say this. The SEC knows exactly what they're doing. And at this point, it's it's basically... It smells like manipulation in some sort of way. The idea of the U.S. SEC and its modern form is to protect U.S. consumers in any given way. They usually only care about and protect the richest of the rich, but they say that they're there to help U.S. consumers should they be getting into something that is not verified and or looked after and or secured by the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. Part of the problem is if I'm going to assume a couple things. I'm going to assume that the SEC knows what Coinbase is. Cool, we can probably agree on that. I'm going to assume that as we receive cryptocurrency news, I'm just a normal channel. I look for the news on the internet and I bring it to all of you. If I have access to X amount of news, I'm going to assume that the SEC also has the internet as well. Cool, got it. The third point to be made is that this news is very common. This isn't anything brand new. This isn't something like what Coinbase has coins on their platform. We get news all the time. This particular one on the screen isn't even anything significant. It happens quite often where Coinbase or a multitude of other cryptocurrency exchanges, but we're going to focus on Coinbase for this one discussion, will announce we're thinking of adding new coins to our platform. It's usually 20 to 25 to 35 different coins. They make a cute little picture with all these different colors and everyone goes, "Woo! I like this coin. I like this coin. I like this coin. If we, us, me, you, I are getting this news that they're going to be adding these coins, I would assume once again that the SEC also knows about this. If the point of the SEC is to protect U.S. consumers, wouldn't it make a lot of sense every single time that any single person, I don't care who they are, especially Coinbase, was announcing we're thinking of adding X amount of coins, 25, 30 coins that are on the screen. If you are there to protect U.S. consumers, wouldn't you have a discussion with Coinbase on that day to say, hey, we need to make sure that none of these are securities or if they are securities that they fall under our jurisdiction so that when what? When U.S. people use or buy or sell these coins that they are also protected. But that's not the way that it works. The way that the SEC works is that they, they wait for people to do things. They see them allegedly doing things that they might deem illegal. And they wait about a good three or four years until American consumers have had their hands in the cookie jar for so long. And then they go, ah, 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 oh, no, 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 this looks illegal. Yeah, you know, now, now you're going to have to play by our rules and do all these other things. It's, it's, it's a load of nonsense. The idea that Coinbase may have many different cryptocurrencies on their platforms that may be securities is hogwash. Why not say something before? Why not say something? Do you remember how quick the response was by the SEC and the CFTC and also Congress in the United States the day that Facebook announced that they would be creating a new coin? It was immediate. It was harsh. It was brash. It was any other word that you can use that sounds terrible. It was immediate and swift. It was the very next day. How dare they think of creating a cryptocurrency? That's funny. So you care when it has something to do against the U.S. dollar, but not actual U.S. consumers. So I saw this news earlier in the week and I decided to save it for news I missed because I knew that I would have a bit more to say about it. I didn't want to throw it into a normal video and kind of take up the bulk of the video, if you will. Um... I wish that the SEC actually cared about consumers. I wish that they actually had already launched a Bitcoin ETF so we can stop having this discussion. I wish that they would stop going after cryptocurrency exchanges or even more so, if you really cared about US consumers, go after the cryptocurrency exchanges the moment they do something that isn't right for US consumers. If the point of you being there is to make sure that US citizens don't put their money into something that could be harmful for them monetarily, 
Do your job immediately. Why wait for a couple years? I and I also something something fishy is is going on. The guy from Coinbase said it a couple days ago, and somebody on Twitter was like, "Oh, that's a, that's an amateur move, bro. You shouldn't be calling out the SEC." No, please, by all means, do it. What's wrong with them? What why what's all this really weird nonsense that they have going on where they're going? They're trying to go after every single company in the cryptocurrency space, whether they be decentralized or not, in an effort to try and gain extra control over them. Because at the end of it, it all has to do with money. And the one who controls the money controls all the power. So what happens when you figure out that you could potentially control a blockchain or the people using the blockchain or creating the blockchain or creating the cryptocurrency exchange or anything else within the space? I'm pretty sure that there are also fees that have to be paid. And guess who gets paid those fees? It's not you. It's the SEC. Where does that money then go to? Anyway, so um, yeah. That's the the SEC news. We're gonna have a lot more of it. Um, it's 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 quite fatiguing uh, to actually have to go through this for a number of years, and even more so a lot of the other stuff that's going on right now. There are all these other proposals to uh, try and tax crypto more within the United States, and to do this, and it's like, you know that people can use planes, right? You know that people can pick up their laptops and go to other countries that are far more favorable than your country like the u.s is no longer really the leader of anything when it comes to money anymore they have a monopoly on everything because of Bretton woods and many other agreements that other countries were you know forced to do but anyway um if you've never watched anything about why we use the u.s dollar or what the petrol dollar is take the weekend and do it I, I feel like a lot of times when I say these things, I think people hear me, but they don't really understand the significance of all of these things. So anyway, that's the SEC news. Yeah. Let's move on. Next up, a new supplement filing once again with the US SEC shows that Kathy Wood's ARK Investment Management has given itself clearance to purchase Canadian Bitcoin exchange traded funds. I wonder why that's happening. The firm's ARK Next Generation Internet ETF, which previously could only get Bitcoin exposure through investments in a grantor trust, has updated its prospectus to enable the fund to invest in Bitcoin ETFs up north. This is not the first company to do so. They're all doing the exact same thing. Uh, for some reason, the US SEC has yet to, after six years, allow a Bitcoin ETF or any cryptocurrency ETF to actually be filed. So what they're doing is, in the news that we had earlier this year, many companies have gone to Europe or are simply investing in Bitcoin notes or funds within Europe. And I guess also they're doing the exact same thing in Canada as well. Doesn't something seem quite off, quite fishy? Why is the SEC taking so long to do all of this? What's what's with all the lawsuits that they have going on at the exact same time? It's it's not just Coinbase and Ripple. There's there's constantly news about them every single day. It's just a lot of time the other coins and the other projects aren't as popular as Ripple or as Coinbase, but they currently have about 15 to 20 different things going on in the cryptocurrency space where they keep declaring everything a security and it becomes a 2-year long dragged out process. So yeah, I don't blame them at all. I hope they find much success in their Canadian ETFs. I hope they make a lot of money. Uh, because even when the US does do it, I think there will be a lot of fanfare. But people aren't going to want to deal in that country anymore. There's so many other places you can go to that have very favorable crypto laws. They either consider it a, 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 a currency or legal tender or there are no taxes on it. Or you have no taxes for 10 years or 5 years. Why would I want to do business there when I can just simply do business online in another country where I'm not going to be taxed? Uh-huh. Let's move on. Next up, Ethereum's computing power has set a new high, indicating that miners may have completed their migration from China. I didn't even have to really dig too deep into this. Here's the actual chart right here. We had a lot of news before when China was dealing in their crackdown of the cryptocurrency space. Sure, why not? A lot of people left the country. Thank goodness. I'm not sure why they were still there in the first place. We've had news the last three or four months that people have been picking up their machines. There was one company that they transferred 65,000 machines, I think, to Texas or something like that. 
and it continues to happen. Here's the actual drop right here as the whole mayhem was happening. But lo and behold, we're back up to a brand new all-time high. I, I believe it's the same exact thing for Bitcoin as well as people have been turning on their machines in other places. We just had news the other day as well, for those of you who remember, uh, that the number of nodes in Germany has surpassed that of America. It's, it's like a constant flip back and forth, but it's still quite fascinating to see that, you know, people should have, there should be no, there should be no longer a discussion of anyone doing business in that country at all. What's the point? It makes no sense of this, you know, anyway. So cool. I assume this number will continue rising because that's how math works. More people are going to get into the actual network. And let's hope for the best. As long as we never have to say that word again or that place, you know, I think things will get a lot better for the cryptocurrency space. There are like five words in crypto. If you can, if you can say all of them in the comments, you'll become my best friend. It's certain words that I never want to have to say again or things that I never want to ever have to talk about because they're just complete. We'd be so much further as a community and as, I mean, all the networks in general if some of these things weren't there, I'll give you a hint. The first one is right here on the screen. If we had no interference or people simply left the country to, to do business everywhere else, we'd be just fine. And the other thing is the SEC. Like, they're not actually helping anyone except for themselves. Uh-huh. Moving on. And to finish things off, Paxful... A popular peer-to-peer -peer crypto marketplace with more than 7 million, that's a lot of people, 7 million users, has announced the integration of the Lightning Network protocol into its platform to allow fast and cheap Bitcoin deposits and withdrawals. Lightning Labs, the leading provider of the payments infrastructure, has provided technical support with the integration that will enable Paxful's customers to use the Lightning Network on their platform Second layer scaling solution, and it said it's somewhere around here. Uh, the, the the fee is usually only one Satoshi. It is like one one thousandth of a penny. It's quite nice. Uh, we're seeing rapid adoption of the Lightning Network across basically every single place. Uh, this has to happen. Bitcoin will not have a long-term future as an actual medium of exchange. If someone has to pay a $15 fee to buy a coffee or a movie ticket, even if you're buying a duvet or a bed, nobody wants to pay $15, $28, dollars for a transaction fee. So the Lightning Network is, at the moment, the most significant uh, thing that we actually have uh, to lean on. There's a lot of Lightning Network news. We've been getting a lot more. I had expected at some point in 2019 that the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, when they threw their support behind Bitcoin, would have announced some type of integration as well. Because I think the NASDAQ was supposed to have launched their own cryptocurrency exchange. I guess that got thrown to the to the wind after they realized that backed wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, but yeah, we're going to start hearing about more companies who are doing this. Um, I, I think, what's the other one? Is, is it BitPay? There's one major company that a lot of, um, if, you ever, if you've ever gone into a store and paid in Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies or seen it as a, as a payment option, there's one major company that everyone kind of gets their little machine, payment machine from. And once they all start integrating Lightning Network, that's basically really all that we need. Uh, because once again, we still had the news before that Starbucks was going to be accepting Bitcoin, as was uh, Nordstrom and Uber and all these other things. But you can't do that unless you have Lightning. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. That is a $3.2 million transaction. I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be, whenever you're watching this video. I do hope that it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. I hope you enjoy your day. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.